I started realizing this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Oh, MMA fighter in the UFC. And so I went on to train for quite a while in my early twenties. I had a very bad injury right at the beginning of my career, which then ended it. Um, <laughs> so that was rough for sure. Um, <clears throat> After that happened, I definitely went to a really dark time in my life with depression, anxiety, um, my Tourette's. But after rehab and everything with my back, and I was able to walk right again, I started going into back into the gyms. I could not stay away. Even if I wasn't able to train as much or I wasn't able to compete anymore, I could not keep away from the gyms. So I went back, I would hang out with the coaches, um, the other fighters, and I started getting people coming up to me for advice. And that advice, I started realizing it was actually helping them, whatever I would suggest. And I didn't just blow off people, you know, sometimes we can get really sour because of certain things we've been through. And <clears throat> with that, you know, we, we really get to the point of like, Instead, you know, like, yeah, you can just go do this, go do that, try it out, whatever. But instead, like, you can take, you know, take it in a whole different d direction, which is what I kind of did naturally without realizing, like, oh, I'm going to grow through this situation. Like, no, I was still bummed out. I was still depressed and whatnot. But I, you know, I kind of took initiative in basically what they were doing because I was already doing that. And so I just kind of came in and I just told him like, look, <clears throat> let me show you how it's done. Let me show you what I did and let's see how it works for you. And so <clears throat> within no time, all of a sudden I find myself coaching and feeling the fulfillment of coaching even more bigger than it was as an actual fighter in the cage and in the ring. And so when that started happening, I realized this is something I want to continue doing. This is like a blessing in disguise. So I went into the nutritional aspect, got my degree in sports nutritional science. I got my certifications in fitness and physical therapy, mobility, um, and the mental and emotional aspect of it all. Just everything that you can think of that comes along with being a coach and especially for athletes and just MMA fighters in general. Um, so that was a little bit of my story um, not to get too in depth with it again I appreciate all the gifts ahead of time and I promise you guys I'm not ignoring anybody um, just out of respect for the show <laughs> and the guests I am um, going to soon introduce our first guest tonight will be Losty and Losty's got quite an interesting story to tell us a little bit about an adversity he had been through and um, the things he did are pretty remarkable. We talked a little bit before the show. And um, it's just crazy, you know, how you can actually take something that's really rough in your life and, you know, literally not even realize you're growing from it. And you just start doing things. You start getting out of your, your head. And um, next thing. Austin, how's it going, brother? How are you? I'm good, bro. Good, good. Everybody, please give Lossy a favor. And again, everybody who's just came in, welcome to Grow Through It. Here we talk a little bit about certain adversities we have faced in our lives um, and how we didn't just go through these things in our life, but how we grew from them and through them to be the people we are now today. So lossy has got a, a little bit of a story. I know we have lots of stories. We could sit here all night and talk about them. <laughs> but uh, Lossy's going to pick this one specifically and uh, go ahead and share it with us. I don't know what you were going to go for, bro. So what do you want so to I Well, I remember you did tell me a little bit about your ex-wife. And um, 
a little bit about what happened with that and how, you know, that so, can be what happened. So I'll start. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as short as possible because it's a very long story. Yeah. Um, I fell in love in a playground at the age of five, right? She had scraped her knee from the monkey bars, and I was a little kid with spectacles <coughs> running up to her, blowing on her knee, saying she's going to be okay. And the minute I locked eyes with her, I kept telling my family I was in love with her. I ran all over the place. I'm in love. My family would joke around, be like, oh my God, you don't know what love is. You're just a kid. You just like her. <laughs> so our families became close because I kept bragging about being in love with her, right? right? As we grew up, she never loved me. I was like, drooling over her, like forever. I followed her to junior high. I even applied to the same high schools as her, not knowing where my career was going. I didn't give a fuck as long as it was next to her. Yeah. So I started seeing her date boys. I got jealous. I went through, and I left her ass because <laughs> I was like, she doesn't love me, right? So I went. I'm trying to make this as short as possible. The story's long. So high school, she dated this guy. is Cuban. She fell in love with head over heels. I did. I went to the service of a JOTC program in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I became this really bad kid. I lost my way. I started pot, uh, you know, never did drugs, never got into that. Then um, she married the Cuban guy and I had lost touch. I went through my fuck boy face where I was just messing with girls and things like that. And then, and then lost the value of conscience, right? I didn't have the conscience. I didn't give a fuck what was hurting. I, I didn't, I just didn't care. Careful on the swearing. Exactly. Yeah, we just don't want any swearing in here. Oh, sorry. For sure. I keep forgetting. And then um, basically, I heard that she got divorced and she had a one-year-old baby. I, I heard she was heartbroken, so I went to the rescue to Jersey, and we lived in Edgewater. And I told her that she didn't have to go through the baby alone because she worked for the federal government and a very lucrative thing that I can't talk about. So basically, uh, I was going for my psychology license at the time. Uh, all right. So basically, what ended up happening was she didn't know what to do with the child. So I offered myself as her best friend coming back into her life. I said, you know what? I'll look after the kid. You do what you got to do. I'll work from home. I got to do my master's, all this other stuff. So basically, intellectually speaking and not procrastinating on it, I just basically took care of the child. And then one day my mother, two years later, the kid is four. My mother goes, she gets really drunk and she goes, are you effing crazy? We're at the dinner table. And right. Ariana, that was her name, looks at her and goes, what are you talking about? She's like, you really think a man's gonna be with you for two years, wiping and cleaning your child, taking care of him while he's doing social and working just because he's your friend? Do you not see he's in love with you? And my dad goes from across the table, he's like, what the F? What are you thinking? You just threw Losty under the bus. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? I didn't care that she didn't know. I just cared that I was near her. I didn't need to touch her. I didn't need to, you know, do anything to her S-wise. I just wanted to be near her. It was it was an unconditional love for you, it wasn't. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. My best friend was my world. And I never dated a woman while I was hanging with her, period. Not even through junior, not even through high school. You get me? Yeah. So um, when she found out, I, my mother said she turned pale white because she didn't want to toy my emotions. So she packed my bags. The next day I come, my bags are outside. So long story short, again, a year goes by. She calls me. She misses me. Blah, 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 blah. We get back to, we get back to going back to the child care. She scrapes her knee. Again, we were rollerblading. I blow on her knee and she was like, you know what, Lucy, I do love you. And I was like, I love you too, man. And she was like, no, 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 I'm like in love with you. And we made out for the first time. We got, uh, yeah, <laughs> we got married within three months. We didn't hesitate. We knew each other forever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then um, basically the child became calling me father as much as his own father as well. He was very present in his life. My, my lesson through my wife was that women are not meat. They're not something we just fuck. I'm sorry, we don't F. They're not something that we just do and regret and just play with the toys. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, 
I learned the concept of a woman, how much the struggles are, what they're devoted to, what a motherhood is like. I learned the concept that women have emotions too. Absolutely. And that's, that's why I just can't do what a lot of guys do in the stream service. I, I, and, and Stacy knows my S love, my number one bouncer. I always say, I'm not here to date. I'm just here to make friends. So basically, um, here we are living together, bro. All of a sudden due to her job and what she was doing for a living, she needed heart open surgery. She got a transplant. She got on medications. I took care of her, cleaned her, bathed her. She got strong again. And there's something, a number one killer is called an MS, which has no cure. And right. what it does is destroy your entire nerve system. It will decapitate you in your brain. And then um, things got really bad for her son and her and me. Uh, I held them at night times trying to explain to him that mommy was sick. I held her telling her we're going to make it, we're going to make it. But the doctors kept telling me there's no cure. I used, I, I even threatened the doctor with a gun one time because he was pissing me off with this no cure thing. Um, finally, it got so bad that her entire left side and eye completely gave out. Yeah. Um, she couldn't even write anymore. She started having uh, PTSD. Uh, she lost her mind. She would talk to me with her eyes cocked that way. Um, <coughs> this is why everybody she called me. Just, it was, she was declining yeah. in every way. It was, and it, you know, it's been 10 years in September, and it, and it still hits me like it was yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I'm stronger it. now. It's time has gone by. But um, I used to hold my wife's face and face it toward me so she could see me cock eye like this. Mm -hmm. And I always told her, I love you no matter what. I don't care what you look like. And she was always worried about what she looks like. I used to brush her hair, paint her toenails, put her eye shadow. Right. I got into the girly thing, right? Finally, she started losing her teeth. I still kissed her. I didn't care. She would beg me every night to make love to her in that bed, sick and skinny like a twig. I was very gentle. And then um, it tore whatever badness I had out of me and made me the man that I am today. As in, I don't toy with people. I tell them the right. truth. And sometimes I hurt because I'm so brutally honest. But um, my wife, the last two weeks was probably the hardest because now I was cleaning her backside. I was, uh, I had to carry her over my shoulder. I had to get buff to build her up because I was a twig. And then I lay with her in bed because the doctor told me she's has she's holding on to a little bit left. And, and then um, I had her in my arms. We were kissing, and then I heard the beep, and the beep died. And I left my lips locked. I, I couldn't let her go. And then um. And then um, you know. And it just tells, it just shows you that people are, are so unappreciative of people's presence. Yeah. Of a child's presence, because I, I hurt more for him than I do for myself. I was a millionaire. I lived in Edgewater. I threw everything away not to remember her. I gave her son $4 million in trust fund when he turns 21. I sold my businesses my house, I burned the clothes, pictures of us. Um, when S Love met me about a year ago, I was locked up in my room. I didn't want social media. I didn't want to be a meet me. I didn't want anything because I'm not a toxic person. I'm a good person. Right. You just wanted to be alone. I wanted to be alone. I was alone for eight years and a half. But before that, I started doing heroin, meth. <coughs> get my hands on because I didn't know how to cope with, with the pain. And on top of that, just to add more injury, our dog died on top of that. So it was just, it was a really dark it was time. Just one thing after another. Fucking like dominoes. That's when, it, when it rains, when it rains, it pours basically is what happened. Yeah. And then and um, so what, when you, when you were trying to, you know, use these 
things to self-medicate and, and quote unquote, like what, what part of you got to the point where you were like, you know what, like, this isn't me, this isn't who I am. And was it something I remember, like, was it a memory of her that would maybe like, like, was it something that she would, what would she think of you? Is that, is that something like that, that happened, that kind of just an epiphany like that, that made you kind of just, cause you're not that person at all now. And no, so try to go back and I can't. Yeah, and it's like, so like, was there something that happened or a memory, like I said, a memory, something that just kind of clicked one day and you just were like, this isn't me, this is not lost. Like, I gotta be me. My family started calling me Perdito. That's where I got lost from. She, they said I was lost. I, um, I think it was the moment where my wife held me between her chest and told me, I wasn't meant for you, you're meant for someone else. And that's what made me push further, bro. And she said to me that the man that I became, she never saw in the middle. And she said, whoever ends up with me, that she would be jealous. And to remember the bunnies and the butterflies and the birds that ship, that she's right. watching me. That's what makes me push forward. Because I do see them sometimes. I do see signs. Right. And, um... <sighs> and, um, you know keeps you strong her memory keeps you strong basically is what you're saying and it's not easy being a widow bro it, it rips a part of you i can only it's imagine gorgeous. i can only imagine bro it's like taking your children away it's it's like taking your dog whatever you hold possession the most especially a love that's at that long and internal and that's why women are afraid to date me as well because they, they feel like they have to match up to them and i'm like you don't have to match up to that you could be your own identity don't do that to yourself yeah it's not about, yeah, it's not about trying to be someone they're not. It's trying to be <clears throat> who they are already, you know, fitting into your life. So, like, I mean, obviously, you know, your, your parents started, you know, recognizing the darkness in you and which brought you to realize the darkness in you and everything. So, like, when that happened, what would you say, like, because who you are now, I know I noticed you love to talk about things about life. And you were you mentioned earlier too how you started studying psychology. Um, did you finish like did you end up finishing that schooling before she passed away, or did you set something you went back to after you know that dark period in your I life? Was, I was twelve credits away from my doctorates. I oh, had she passed. practice, but I didn't finish. And then, um, and I was good. I was, a, I was a 4.0 GPA student. So, right. but, um, my father found the rope hanged around my neck and, um, I was trying to kill myself one day in one of the dormitories and he had, I don't know how he knew he just felt the premonition. Something wasn't right. Cause I wasn't answering for three days. So I did try to kill myself multiple times. Um, and it still crosses my mind from time to time, but then I have friends that I've developed to meet me, you know, and as love is always checking in I, and um, Jesse Lynn and a lot of people. Would you, so you'd say like being a part of this app or in general, like kind of brought you back to life. Yeah. Yeah. It has actually, cause I, I was socially anxiety. I, I had uh, bad traumas uh, as love knows. We went to a bar. I couldn't go in. I couldn't go to a strip club. I couldn't do anything. I never been to a strip club. I don't like strip clubs. And um, I couldn't go to bar. I, I shake. She saw it. I turn pale white. I start shaking. Yeah. And um, but yeah, this app has definitely and I use it to influence my pain to make people better, to let them know what I've learned to share with them and what they learned to share with me. I don't use this shit for toxicity. I don't <clears throat> care about diamonds. I care about friendships and conversation. Absolutely. And um, yeah, man, I met S Love. I mean, I met Luna. I met Sunshine. I met you, bro. You're, you're, you call me up. That's a weird thing to me, bro. To be honest with you, I never had a guy call me and be like, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, like that's, bro, really, I, that's I just you know, we. I have I've had other things that I've gone through, and um, you know, I I understand what it's like to feel. I mean, not anything in your situation. I've never been in, obviously, but just knowing what it's like to be feel alone even with you when you're surrounded by people physically you still feel alone and sometimes it just takes a, like a text message or one phone call 
and you know and then all of a sudden you don't feel alone anymore so i like of course i'm going to reach out to anybody that's important in my life you know even whether they're new whether they're old doesn't matter um you know it's just that's that's real that's real love you know i mean it's like like you like going back like how you cared about your ex-wife was from the moment you met her was always unconditional and that's what you know i think a lot of people get that confused nowadays is expectational love and unconditional love like there's a huge difference but at the same time there's such a fine line between the two and people get confused on that and let me say something man um i know what love looks like and, and i know what it feels like and it's yeah it's not lust it's not the booty it's not the the yeah, comics the, right no, it's it's more organic yeah. You can't build it, it forms. And um, I wish people who knew what that feels like because it's beautiful, but it's also a curse when you lose it. And um, that, that, may, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so it's, it's organic. When a woman loves a man, it's, it's powerful, bro. It's not something you want to mess with. Oh, yeah. And man loves a woman, you know by the gaze that he gives her. You know it because it comes out of his heart. And um, I'm looking for that again. I want that back. I do because I miss right. it. I miss coming home to a woman. So basically, you know, just <clears throat> you've always kind of were taught, you know, just kind of going back, you kind of were always taught how to treat a woman, how women, you know, they, they're just like, they're human beings just like us. And, and even more so, they're more, they experience more emotions and certain things more than men do. And to respect that, you know, because we don't know what they're going through, you know, but we try to just be there. Sometimes all it is for a woman, and, you know, sometimes from my experience and obviously your experience is it, all it really is is just being there, not even having anything to say or not even having anything to do. Just literally the presence it can truly, you know, just make the whole difference in a, in a woman's life. And I feel like you you learn that already before having to experience what you had went through. And then by going through what you went through, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you're even more in deep. I feel like you should even, maybe you should <laughs> try teaching a class for other guys that don't, you know, appreciate women as much. On my stream, I tell them, this is what you do. Right. That's why they call me Dr. Hitch. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hitch. Everybody, welcome to Grow Through It. Um, again, my name is Cure Age. I go by Cure. This is our guest, Losty. Please give him a favorite. He is Dr. Hitch. If you ever go visit his streams, he's got all the advice for all the dating people, people that are out here trying to date um, and learning how to respect women, how to respect men, how to respect emotion, how to respect how we feel. So please, everybody, thank you, Losty. I appreciate you, brother, for being my guest tonight. Um, Everybody hit in with the fave. I'm gonna go ahead and have you hop out of here uh, before we get our next guest. Um, but wow, that is, you know, that's wild. And um, that, that's just, you know, that's very, very, it's, it's, it's almost hard to even fathom, you know, in our own minds, just hearing that because that's, you know, that's something that we don't really think about. We see it in movies. We don't really think about it as something that would happen to us. But we think about, you know, those things when we see them in movies. And here it is. He literally lived through it. But he didn't just live through it. He grew from it. You know, and here he is, this guy that, you know, he was after this girl for a very long time. And he was starting to feel lost from being in the military and everything. And now he... <laughs> He's over here giving advice on Meet Me. And Meet Me, you know, an app, here we are, literally just helped him grow. It helped him grow to be this Dr. Hitch, you know, how he is in his stream. Um, so, again, everybody, thank you ahead of time and before for all the gifts. Um, and I promise I'm not ignoring anybody that has come in or came in while Losty was in the box. I see everybody and I appreciate everybody being here. Um, I do want to give one little quote. I like to do a little quote each week between the guests. 
Our next guest will be Drew. He's also um, not so much a newer streamer, but he is, he hasn't been around as much. He's been off and on quite a bit, but um, real quick, and this, I think this really applies, especially today, um, because I did talk to Drew a little bit about some, some, something that he had went through when he was younger. And um, obviously what Lofty just shared with us is you don't get what you want by thinking big. You get it by acting big. And I feel like that really fits well with, you know, it's kind of like you can't just think about what you want. You got to actually do, do it. You know, we can, we can learn everything we want. We can take all the classes in the world. We can think of, we could literally go to school for 20 years, but if we're not applying that knowledge, we're not acting on it, then it's really not going to get us anywhere. And in Lossie's, you know, situation and his adversity that he faced and grew from, he didn't just, I mean, yeah, there was a dark time where he did just think about it. That's natural. It's going to happen to a lot of us. You know, we're going to go through something rough in our life and we're going to sit and dwell on it and it's going to be rough, but he didn't stay that way. You know, he started acting, he started taking steps in the right direction. He started reaching out and people were reaching out back to him. And like he said, I, I hit him up. He's something he's not used to. So even though we've grown through certain adversities, we're still always growing. You know, there's, I really don't feel like there's ever such thing as some, because if we're not growing, what are we really doing? I always like to say, if we're not growing, we're dying. And that goes in a lot of different ways, whether it's spiritually, mentally, physically, anyway. So um, I just wanted to give a little quick quote Everybody stick around to the end. Um, we are going to have a little fun with that. We're going to have Losty come back in the box with Drew after Drew's um, story. And um, so with that being said, you know, Drew, whenever you're ready, uh, go ahead and hit that guest box, brother, and we'll have you come on in. And again, everybody, thank you for coming in. Thank you for all the love. I see it all. I have not been ignoring it, I promise. <laughs> um, just want to respect the guests for the show. And um, everybody, welcome, Drew. <clears throat> hey, what's up, man? What's up, Drew? How are you, bro? Doing good. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say that I really uh, like resonated with Losty's story. Uh, my dad has MS right now. So oh, wow. I kind of see like kind of see where this is going to go, but, yeah. um, you know, li uh, building on that like, whole growth thing, you know what I mean? Now, like what I've been through, I kind of have a better idea. Of it. <laughs> right. But, um, uh, yeah, everybody, so everybody, if you haven't already, please hit, uh, drew with the favorite. Um, also if you guys could just refrain from the hearts a little bit, just to keep the stream going. Well, it does kind of mess with the stream a little bit. I really appreciate all of you very much. Um, but yeah, Drew, so I know we did talk a little bit before the show and you mentioned how you got into some trouble that wasn't even your fault from what you were telling me, if I correct me if I'm wrong. And okay. you ended up and in, into um, serving like some kind of, um, I don't want to say the word punishment, but basically you were paying the fees, dues, whatever by being in wildland firefighting basically yeah. while volunteering in that so um yeah i got into you know what i mean some trouble as a kid and uh uh they basically wanted me to like tell on somebody and i wasn't gonna do that and so i got put into like this kind of like a like a labor camp you know kind of deal mm -hmm. and it was, it was like a, a wildland firefighting program mm -hmm. but um you're with you, you know what I mean? You're, you're in that place and you're around a bunch of people and you've made this mistake and you've met around a bunch of other people that made mistakes, you know, and um, uh, that kind of rubs off on you, you know what I mean? Their attitude, a lot of people are negative and stuff. And, uh, right. you know, so I started noticing that I was getting more negative and not really in, like, definitely not the growth mindset, you know what I mean? Like, right. so for me, were you just kind of young and young, dumb and having fun kind of <laughs> stage or what? Yeah, a little bit of that, maybe a little bit of trying to like fit in with the wrong crowd kind of stuff. Mm. But, um, okay. you know what I mean? You're, you're, 
for me, my growth started with introspection, right? So I had a lot of time on my hands like when I was in this program and you weren't fighting fire, you were just <coughs> waiting around for the fires to happen. And, you know, you'd sit there on your bed and, you, and I would just stare up at the ceiling and I would just, I'm always in my head. So I would just ask myself like, why? Like, how did I get here? Why, am, what happened, you know? And so if you sit down with yourself in a quiet space and you ask yourself a, a question and if you really, really want to know the answer, like that answer will come to you. Right. And so the answers started coming to me and then, you know, they, you, it's a hard truth. You know what I mean? It's not something that you want to accept for, you know what I mean? That, that, oh, this is, this is why I did it. This is how I am. You know what I mean? And then like, looking at that after you introspect and you find the answers to your questions, the next step is to take active measures to try to change yourself to be better. You know what I mean? And like, right, yeah. and like actively trying like that process is not easy. It doesn't just, I mean, for some, it might be, you know what I mean? For some, they might hit an epiphany and it's just like, okay. And they switch, you know what I mean? But others it's like, you act you actually have to actively try to like change those negative things about yourself that you might not like, you know, or that you think yeah. have led you down the wrong path or, you know, like, and yeah, basically just figuring out like, <laughs> why is life doing this to me? It's basically like what, what we tend to ask ourselves a lot. Yeah. It's like, is life doing this to you or are you doing this to you? You know, exactly. Exactly. And, um, you know, and, and another piece of this that factors in too is perspective, you know, like there's guys in there that were just super grumpy, super angry all the time, just mad at life, just couldn't yeah. cope with what had happened or accept, you know what I mean, why they were there and didn't, you don't know, have the best outlook on things and uh, started noticing myself getting negative and stuff. I was <coughs> yeah, that, that's not how I want to be. You know what I mean? I see, right. I see myself in these people and I just didn't <laughs> want to be like You basically that. saw what you didn't want. Yeah. I mean, you, you see what you do want when you admire somebody, you know what I mean? And then if you see something that you don't like in other people's and you see yourself in there, you know, it's just, it's being self-aware. And like, and I really love the whole idea of introspection, like just sitting down with yourself and kind of evaluating, you know, like what's going on with you. And so, I mean, I kind of have this analogy that I, I, I kind of made up and it kind of holds true, but you know, like life is kind of like Disneyland, right? If you can, if you can imagine two kids that had the exact same to the detail uh, experience, going to school, you know, and you ask the first one, oh, hey, this was your first time at Disneyland. Like, how'd you like it? And he goes, oh, it was great. The rides were great. I got to meet Mickey. The food was awesome. It was awesome, right? And you ask the next kid, oh, hey, it was your first time at Disneyland. How'd you like it? He goes, man, it sucked. The lines were long. Everything's expensive. There's too many people. It's like the experience didn't change. They had the same experience to the detail. Right. What That's how they looked choose, at it. Yeah. What you choose to focus on is what you're experiencing. <coughs> exactly. So for me, going through something negative, you know what I mean? In a place where I made a mistake and this is a bad thing, you know what I mean? And I just... I decided right then and there that, that I'm going to take as much positive out of this and I'm going to use that positive to influence me and to change and become the person that I want to be. You know what I mean? I wanted to be able to look myself in the mirror and, and, and live with myself and be happy with myself. And right. with my like we all do. Yeah. It, it wasn't like that at first. You know what I mean? I was looking at myself in the mirror, so to speak, and I didn't like who I was, you know? So, I was just strong headed. I said, okay, this is not who I'm going to be. This is not me. This is not my deal, you know? And it, it wasn't easy. It's never easy to face those like hard truths about yourself, even if they're negative. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Especially negative, like, uh, but through like constant and deliberate actions and like, like trying, you know what I mean? Like actually just trying um, over time and, and also with the support of good people around you too, that is also like really key. I met a lot of good, good people in there.
Uh-oh. I'm not really sure what happened there. Um, but yeah, it sounds like, you know, just, um, oh, here it comes. <laughs> You gotta love those random 9.30 calls from your mom, right? <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, man, it, like it really sounds like, you know, like like I say, I say sometimes you to people and I say last, last week's episode was just life doesn't happen to us. It happens for us. And, you know, it's like here, here you are, you know, taking the rap for somebody that you, you never even did anything wrong. Um, but you were trying to fit in with the wrong crowd and then, you know, you ended up in this place where you're actually saving people's lives and not just people's, but animals too. You're in the wilderness doing firefighting. And just that is, you know, commendable. And just, you you said yourself, like you had so much time in between going out there and rescuing basically our planet, you know, humans, creatures, things of like, but um, you were able to just sit alone with yourself without the distractions of like electronics and i feel like that's so important nowadays because i for me to be around certain people i feel like it's really important to be able to be around someone who who knows how to be alone with themselves you know i feel like that's it's become such a rare thing for someone to be able to just sit with themselves and be alone and and i don't mean like anyone can sit around and watch and binge watch movies or shows like that's not what I mean. I mean, like, like what you were doing was sitting and 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 literally getting in here. Yeah. Like, and 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 it's yeah. it's scary because we find such dark things, and up here in our minds that, you know, whether it's our past, whether it's our present, whether it's the future, and that's where anxiety kicks in. That's where can the the depression can kick in as well, yeah. and you know. But when you keep going and obviously you had a lot of time to do that and you were very persistent and consistent and spending that time alone and with yourself that like after a while those dark things aren't as dark Mm -hmm. you know and they're not as and they're not as loud and as not they don't bother you as much that you kind of accept them but also at the same time you want to change them You you accept like okay this is where i am now you know like like you were saying like this is where i am now but this, and then you saw that person, you saw these people that they're grumpy on stuff, and you see them like, well, this is not where I want to be, hundred. you know. And it just took being alone with yourself to realize that. Hundred percent. And then you, like you said, you know, right before you, your mom <laughs> interrupted the show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, right before she called, you know, you, you were talking about how being around the right people was a big thing. So, like, how did you come across being around the right people that really helped in that way? Um, like I said, you would notice people that there were things about them that you didn't like that you saw yourself in it. And then there's other people in there that are like, actually like good people, like genuinely nice, kind, uh, we show kindness to others. You know what I mean? And yeah. just surrounding yourself, like making friends with those people, hanging out with those people, opening up to them, you know what I mean? Like building right. trust, you know, I mean, a lot of people, they can't sit with themselves because they don't love themselves, right? You know what I mean? And you can tell, you can tell. Not somebody, happy. Yeah, somebody, and you, you can tell when somebody's happy and when somebody loves themselves, you know? And uh, I, that program taught me so much about life, right? Not just like, like in my head too, but also like working and doing that whole purpose, <clears throat> getting back to the community. And so it was by far like, the hardest thing I've had to do in my life. And, um, but I wouldn't take it back for the world because it made me who I am. So like, but when you apply fire and pressure to a piece of coal, that's, that becomes a diamond. So the coal is not going to like the fire or the pressure, but the diamond loves it. So I've come out of this, I've come out of this just not loving, but accepting. And I wouldn't change that because of who I am now, I'm, I love myself now. I can totally, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's night and day. And right. and other people can tell when you love yourself. And so uh, when you start loving yourself, then you can, other people come in your life that are good and you just start surrounding yourself with good people. And it's really like, you know what I mean? It's been all downhill from there. But that was, like, that was the most, like, adverse thing that I've ever had to do, you know? Right. 
and and it's taught me a lot about how to overcome adversity in the future you know what i mean like right yeah exactly and so, not just not just that you know situation but future situations like the whole perspective like you were talking about with the disneyland comparison yeah you know it's 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 really that's the key you know it's such a big key it seems like because if you like the next time something you know crazy happens in your life or happens for you i want to say for not to you but you know you'll look at it different maybe not right away but in in in, you know days or a few hours or whatever it may be you will switch your perspective and introspective on what's really going on you know and realize like this isn't just happening to me it's happening for me yes so like you know and in in that way like it's like we kind of welcome it yeah you can be like okay this sucks but you know what there's a lesson in here and i'm gonna learn it i'm gonna find the silver lining you know and you can also take i've also taken what i've learned and helped people around me who might not have had understood that 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 you know, I mean, it is important to find the silver lining in things. It is important to to not just look at the bad, but to look at the good too, and then to choose to focus on the good rather than on the bad. Like you can see it for both of what it is. I'm not saying to be naive about a situation. Right. You know, I'm just saying to find that silver lining and to hold on to it because that's what's going to get you through it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Because you know, and then like Losty was saying this too in the beginning of you know, when he was in the box is that there really isn't. And I I tell this, I used to tell this to my clients, like there's really no such thing as like a negative emotion. You know what I mean? Like we can feel anger, we can feel sadness, we can feel happiness, we can feel, and and the the whole point of that is that we don't, we can't be happy all the time. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't make sense. That's not what, why, why would these other emotions exist if we were meant to be happy all the time? So, but it's, it really, what the emotions, when I think maybe why people get confused on why there are bad or negative emotions and good and positive emotions is because when you're happy, you lead to do good things, right? When you're happy, you, you, you tend to do good things for other people, for yourself, et cetera, et cetera. But when you feel anger, when you feel depressed, if you're not expressing it correctly, or if you're not expressing it at all, we kind of, you know, subdue it down into us to us you know deep down and and that leads especially like down the line leads to mistakes you know like let's just use your friend for example that you took the rap for you know he he may have had some certain emotions that he never was able to express or never learned how to and you know here he did something wrong you know and um obviously you know everyone we all have different emotions that at certain times of our lives i feel that we you know, start talking, we're not able to express it right, or we don't know how, because we're too young, a lot of times, and um, basically, you know, it's crazy, because it it does take an effect on us later in life, and that's what happens in the world, you know, with people that have, you know, issues like that. Yeah, every um, emotion has its place, every emotion has, has, has a meaning, everything has, you know what I mean, it's, every emotion has a reason for why it's there, and I agree 100%, I think there are bad emotions, but there, but it's like, okay, I'm feeling this and maybe like, why am I feeling this? You know, do you get back into that introspective part? And then, you know, exactly. Some days are just off. Some days are just off. You know what I mean, I don't, I don't have, yeah, a, not every day is going to be good. Cause then it'll get boring. Right. Yeah. I have no problem expecting that either. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'll just say, Hey, you know, I don't know. I'm just a little sad today. Why? I don't know, but I'll figure it out. It's not a big deal. Right. You know? <clears throat> yeah, and and you don't you don't just ignore it, you know. You kind of like, and I'm sure with all that practice, you know, doing wild wildland firefighting, you it were able to. Now you're able to even better sit alone with yourself, and and you know, sit and figure out and and get to the root of why today's feeling off or why today's feeling a little more sad or angry, and boom, you know, you come up with a result. So as soon as you figure out why, you figure out how to get, you know, grow through that. I think, and I'm just having this thought right now. I think that um, learning to have that inner dialogue, to be talk to yourself and to be honest with yourself, I think that's like building a relationship just like with anybody else. You have to build a relationship with yourself too, you know? Then you have to like, and it, it it's, it's not always like, it doesn't, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but you eventually get better at it. You can keep doing it. And just being, a lot of people are not honest with themselves. A lot of people are just, it's because it's the hardest thing, I think. It it might be the hardest thing, but I think it's the <laughs> best thing for for anybody to grow. 
it starts with that being honest with yourself yeah absolutely <laughs> and it's, it's funny because like I, I think i said this on the last episode it's just <clears throat> one one way and this is like introspective would you know what is something that you are have grown into from your experience is that you know we can look at thoughts and emotions and feelings as if and i use this for classes i taught before you know and and with clients and everything is we can look at it as if we're standing on the side of a highway and the car is going by you know those are different thoughts those are different feelings those are different emotions we don't have to attach ourselves we don't have to get in any of those cars or step in front of any of those cars and get hit by a depression truck <laughs> you know what i mean like we can just look at it like okay there's some sadness going by i feel it i accept it and then i realize why it is and then it, it's gone you know but like what we what we resist persists you know there's that mm -hmm. old saying and so a lot of times it seems like i know with me like when i was younger and i had my injury i i did not accept the fact that i couldn't fight anymore like I just wouldn't accept the fact that it was that this is going, this is happening. <laughs> like here I am in rehab learning how to like walk better again, you know, going to see acupuncturists, chiropractors, things like that. And I just, it didn't matter to me. Like to me, I was just like, no, like I'm still going to do this. Like I'm still going to, I just, I wouldn't accept that this is it. <laughs> this is the end of line for this. Like this, I got to move on from this. I got to grow from this somehow. And so it did it did lead to depression it did lead to severe anxiety and things like that but like i said you know in the beginning of the show i started hanging around the gyms and things like that and people coming up to me and i'm just like it's kind of shocking like no one ever asked for my advice before when i was in the cage but, but probably it's because i was busy working that was my job you know like some people do it for classes some people do it for experience for the workout it was my job so I was there three, three, day, three times a day for five, six days a week. And <clears throat> this was so crazy how I had come and, you know, here I am and, you know, with crutches a little bit for a while, not too long. I didn't have the crutches, thankfully, but um, I was here and I'm just sitting there with the coaches kind of watching the classes and people are asking me, you know, like, I'm not going to say my name, but they say, you know, Kira, like, you know, when you were, when you were fighting, like, would you do this, this and this? And I was just so like, <laughs> I guess it was in awe in a way, mm -hmm. you know, like instead of like, like introspective, like you said, instead of being like brushing them off, like, oh, I don't know. I just tried this man. Or whatever. I didn't like push them off. I like took it in. I, I started, that's when I started really accepting the fact that, you know, well, I used to be in there. Here I am now. This is what it is. This is what it is. Let, these are the cards that are in front of me. Let me turn them into a world flush. Let me grow the grow these cards into a royal flush you know let me let me get three more cards you know let me make this royal flush right here so i did that and in that like i found coaching to be even more fulfilling than being in the cage you know what i mean than being a fighter working with coaches and having them teach me and work with me i i fell in love with helping people because the after effects of people just winning Mm -hmm. or people just progressing in general was just like you know I, I would tear up just seeing it I literally i'd be in a corner in a ring and <laughs> i'm tearing up at like after the win i'm just like so proud of them and then you feel say, proud of yourself too i don't want to say like the key to happiness but i think the key to fulfillment is helping others and i noticed that what really made me feel like good and what really helped you know what i mean like kind of tip a card over the edge for the growth process was when I could take the lessons and the advice that I learned and, and, and then apply them to people around me that were going through hard times or similar situations or feeling emotions that I had, you know what I mean, that I felt before and just coming to them with, under, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, absolutely. helping them grow through that, you know, it was just like, okay, like that, it, it just, you feel whole, like, giving back to society in some way is the key to like, you know, like a fulfilled life, I think. And, and I, I absolutely agree. And what's crazy is like, you wouldn't have been able to do that if what happened for you never happened. 
Yeah. You know, like you might have still been trying to fit in. I mean, maybe, maybe not. It doesn't matter. It's not the point because it doesn't matter now. But you might have been at that point just trying to fit in with the wrong crowd and not realize like who you actually want to be and, and took those steps into growing into that place and had been able to be alone with yourself, like just in here, you know, no distractions, no phones, no, no social media, no movies, nothing like just you, yourself, and you, you know, me, myself and I, like, that's, that's it. 100%. You know, and just like, obviously you were, you know, you, you were in a similar situation where you were, you know, and the same, same with Lofty, you know, he was helping his ex-wife, you know, through it all. And like you just said, you know, helping other people is very fulfilling. It's very hard at times. And I think especially we can all agree that in Losty's case, like that is the hardest time to be able to be helping someone because it's hurting you so much. Um, but, you know, you were out there, you, you were putting out fires. You were literally saving hundreds of or more lives, you know, that are, were at risk. And I'm sure, like, tell me a little bit about that fulfillment. I, that's, that's something I wanted to ask about because, and I was going to have you and Losty come in the box. He was not able to come back. Um, he had a, he had a situation he had to handle yeah so it's just going to be you and me to close out the show but um tell me more about like how it felt fulfilling that or how that fulfillment of you know putting being able to put out fires like i've never never done that personally obviously but i've always been curious it is probably like the most awesome thing that i've ever done uh like the sense of like purpose that you have waking up every morning like um to go out and, you know what I mean, to help these people. I mean, you, there's some of these, I've been, uh, I went to San Diego to put out fires. I've been all the way up and down California. You know, <coughs> and uh, the people are so appreciative of what you're doing and it just touches you deep down, you know? And right. like, it, it taught me a lot about life. Like I was not a very punctual person before that. And now I'm never late. Like, not not never, but it's I punctuality is extremely important. You know what I mean? So it te it teaches you. It taught me. You know what I mean? It taught me good work ethic. It taught me. And we were on right. the end of our 24 hour shift and our relief crew couldn't come. So we had to do more. And so the captain was like, Hey, we have to go put out the spot fire down here. And so just like a basic, uh, analogy. So like if the fire is coming this way, right? Like I don't know, if the fire is coming this way, it'll spit out. So there'll be like a fire over here and over here. So we're in like front of the fire and there was a spot fire that we need to put out. And as we're going to put it out, we didn't know that the fire behind us had jumped the line. And so it basically almost encircled us. Like we thought it had encircled us and the helicopter above couldn't see us at all because of the smoke. And our captain told us to uh, deploy our fire shelters. And I just remember like, well, first of all, being scared, but I looked, as before I got down, I saw my captain. He was just like, oh, my God, how did this happen? And so that, like, just freaked me out. Like, I thought I was, I was praying. I told I told myself, okay, you lived a good life. You know what I mean? This, this is this is probably You're preparing yourself for the end. And uh, so last minute, you know, the, the helicopter guy, he's like, okay, I see you. You have an opening like 500 yards to the left, but you need to go now. And so my captain's like, all right, everybody, get up, get up. And he gets on the radio and he's like, no, I said now. And so we just dropped everything and sprinted for what seemed like, it seemed like a quick second, but we ended up running for like a mile and a half to get out of there. And then we got helicoptered out. And that was just, um, that made me appreciate life so much more. That helped, like, I, I, it, at that point, I knew no matter what I go through, I'm, I'm going to be good. Like, no matter what yeah. happens, like, I'm going to be fine. Like you faced that Goliath. Yeah. 
And yeah. now it's like nothing else is, is, is as scary as that. So not at all. That's uh, crazy. Um, if my knees, like if my like knee wasn't like bad, like I would be right back in there. Like, yeah, it's just for a job, basically yeah. a career. It's, it's, it's it's more than a career it's so fulfilling being able to help others and save things and you know what i mean it's like it's completely selfless you're going and you're throwing yourself <coughs> right literally right into the fire you know what i mean and yeah. and you can and it's the hardest work i've ever done i mean it, they they can play the, um <coughs> they really, yeah it's conditioned as an athlete to do that job like right um so physically it was hard. I mean, I learned that that's, that's what taught me that your mind is stronger than your body because you would be hiking for hours, you know, hours, hours, hours. And you just felt like your body was going to, you're like, I can't take another step, but yet you had to, and you took that other step and you took another one, you took another one. And so I realized that the, the mental fortitude can overcome like your, whatever your body is feeling at any time, you know, it just, yeah. Mind over matter. Yeah. And then, people say that but do they, do they really understand that right <laughs> as i was just gonna say i was like as i was saying i'm like do people really like you know we say it all the time yeah um but everybody who, everybody thank you for coming to grow through it uh, my name is cure age i go by cure um this is drew if you have not hit him with a favorite already please do um he has been an awesome guest and uh, our first guest lost, he, unfortunately he was called away. He was not able to come back. We we're gonna have him and Drew in the box, kind of exchange some ideas just to close out the show of things that, you know, help them grow through their adversities, basically how they grew through it. Um, but so if you haven't already hit my, you know, start at the top, favorite me, favorite Drew, everyone, thank you again for all the gifts. Thank you all. Say thank you for Drew's gifts and Austin. I just want to. Um, say, uh, hold on. I didn't mean to in interrupt you, but if I took no, no, you're good. You're good. I was still going to talk no. to you. I was. Um, I was just going to say, like, oh. what's what's what do you feel? I mean, obviously, we went through quite a bit, but what do you feel like something that might help someone in the audience that you felt was one of the biggest and quickest takeaways from that whole experience that really like started, like you know, what I mean, like boom, like now it's time to grow now it's the, like this is it I'm, I'm done with you know like i'm done with who i was or who i was trying to be or whatnot uh, this is now, now i know i'm like this is it this is i gotta grow 100 percent, it was sitting down with myself with no distractions no nothing <clears throat> asking myself questions and sometimes i would just ask the question over and over in my head until i got an answer and it's just that being honest with yourself and actually wanting to know the answer and thinking about it that answer will come to you. whether you like the answer or not it's going to come to you and you can choose what to do with it after that but i chose to change but i think the thing that first started it all off was sitting there and being honest with yourself and asking <coughs> like whatever that question is for you you know what i mean yeah like, absolutely but um that's that's the path where it started for me would you, would you say like it's <clears throat> just doing your best not to be afraid to be alone yeah it's i mean no, go ahead and take I, I don't i don't know about being afraid to be alone because i mean I, well at that point i wasn't like i didn't really have a choice i mean i just was well, alone. not alone physically but alone up here you know without the the typical distractions that we we tend to get ourselves into to keep us from getting to that point of you know self-reflecting yeah, you kind of because it is scary, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I've been there, I've done it, I know. You kind of have to want the answers. You know what I mean? You have to that want. Makes sense, yeah. And uh, so when you want those answers, I, I think that's the best way to figure them out. Um, and it's gonna be hard, especially you know what I mean, with all the distractions and the TV and the phones and all that. And um, right. definitely sitting alone with yourself watching TV is not being alone with yourself. I'm no, talking, yeah, it's a distraction. Yeah, I'm talking. It's like almost like a meditation thing. You don't have to close your eyes to meditate. You can just sit there and stare at the ceiling, but just no music, just in silence, and you know, just you start yourself. With, just yeah, you start with 15 minutes or something. You know what I mean? And try, but just <coughs> try to do that and try to just sit there and and, and 
and ask yourself that question if you're trying to look for an answer. Absolutely. I agree. Like that's def definitely something like I, I, I need, I, I do it every day, but I, I'd like to increase the time I do um, because I, I've felt for me so many things I've been able to work through, grow through, <clears throat> whether it was just that day, whether it was in my past, whether it was something huge or just something, you know, like just a day, something that happened that day, something small um, was just being able to sit here with no distraction putting my phone away and just you know being in, in there you know digging in for that, that like you said that answer because i wanted the answer i didn't want to feel how i felt anymore and i think you know sometimes i feel like it, it just takes that certain point there's just that draw point where you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired is that saying or just sick and tired of looking at yourself and like you said earlier and looking at yourself in the mirror <clears throat> I think we all want to look at ourselves in the mirror and be like, you know, and like literally say like, I'm proud of you, <laughs> you know, like, look, I'm proud of you, like, and like talking to yourself. And how many of us actually do that? You know, probably nobody. So, you know, it's just like, that's huge, you know, and I, and I, I definitely I have to agree with you like that is definitely a huge takeaway. I'm glad that you were able to, and you responded so quickly. So obviously that was already, you know, your first instinct and intuitive feel of what really got you to that boom place like this is time to grow i still do it you know what i mean i check in with yeah. myself in the mornings and then i check in with myself at night and i just kind of go through and see okay where am i at you know what i mean and then if there's an issue that i think is like a serious issue like i will just put everything away for an hour and just lay on my bed and just think and just ask myself i mean this when i when i got out i moved from i moved right when i got out of there I was from a place where um, I had all the friends, you know what I mean, that I wanted. I mean, they were our friends, acquaintances, you know I mean? but it was just very, I was never bored. If I ever wanted to hang out with somebody, there's always somebody to hang out with. So when I moved, I didn't know anybody. And I felt like really lonely, really socially awkward. And I was just really like kind of depressed. And I said, it took me a minute for it to click in me. And then I was like, oh, okay. like. I'm depressed. Like I'm kind of feeling depressed right now. I said, okay, well, let's figure this out. So I sat yeah. in my room for like two hours and I was just, okay, why am I like this? And then I, you know what I mean? It came to me. I said, oh, you're insecure. You're insecure about your mistake. You're insecure about where you've been. You're insecure about fitting, fitting back in. You know what I mean? And from right. then, and, and that wasn't the answer I wanted. Nobody wants to hear that about themselves. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to yeah, know. nobody nobody wants to like take that, you know, and accept that. But that's <laughs> hard truth of it. But once I had yeah. that hard truth, I could I could, you know what I mean, do things or make little adjustments um to change that. You know what I mean? I had to realize that I had to realize that man, I am a cool person and I do love myself. And there's no reason for me to be lonely because well, I'm the coolest person I know. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I want to hang out with myself. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Exactly. And that's huge. Like, when you get to that point of where you are so happy, you know, because you, you get to that point where you, you do quiet that voice in your head or that fear of what you're going to find up here mentally, emotionally, that's in our minds and even in our hearts. You know, a lot of people forget that, like, they say mind, body, spirit, or whatever, but they don't think heart. Because the heart is what is the biggest thing. Like it holds on to so much and we forget about it. You know, we just use our minds all the time instead of, and this is our heart is where our intuition comes in and, you know, things like that. But like, it, it's, it's so true. Like when you are able to practice enough that alone time, you know, and that's where growth happens. That's where comfort with yourself happens. That's where you, and you get that sense of feeling that no matter where you are if you're physically alone in the middle of nowhere you've got yourself you, yeah. so you're not you know that gives you that like I'm confidence really well. yeah <laughs> or if you're you know in a lonely relationship you it's like you can you can um because you know i'm sure we've all been there where we're in a relationship or we're around friends and we still feel like we're alone because it's just not the type of energy or the vibe whatever it may be that we don't want to be in and so but you know, when you get to the point where like, I want to hang out with myself, like you said, 
<laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter. You know, you could be in a the room full of a hundred people who you don't even know, but you feel great because you're with yourself. Mm-hmm. And, or like, you know, we said in the middle of nowhere, all stuck alone, but you still are with yourself. And like, no matter what, no one can mess that up. Yeah. I think and that's it's huge. A, it's a great feeling to be there. And it's so, it's so, it's like relaxing. You know what I mean? You can take a deep breath. Yeah. It takes a lot yeah. of time. <laughs> yeah. You don't feel that pressure to like be like, uh, you're in now. I was getting a call too. But yeah, no, everybody, thank you again who <laughs> hasn't, you know, who has come in since Drew's been in the box or has been here all this whole episode. I really appreciate everybody for coming to grow through it. It's every Monday, 9 p.m. Pacific. Uh, midnight technically Tuesday Eastern Um, if you guys are interested in being in a guest in the show uh, go ahead and feel free to add me on Instagram or snapchat I have both links in my bio you can message me and um, we can get you featured on the uh, on the show as a guest and you can share your story of some kind of adversity some kind of circumstance that you've been through um, but not something that we, we want to aim towards where we grew. You know, we don't just go through life. We grow through it. Cause if we just constantly are going through life, we're not actually living. Right. I mean, I mean, who, who agrees with me there? You know I mean? Like, I feel like that's my take on it, you know, personally. And if we're not growing, like I said, I, it feels like if we're not growing, we're kind of, that, we're kind of just dying. You know, we're just existing. We're merely existing and we're not actually living up to that full potential. And Drew explained how he went from, you know, a point where he was just trying to fit in to the point after everything he had went through and everything he started doing for himself naturally and not by accident, because there are no accidents in my opinion. And life does happen for us, not to us. That's my favorite, one of my favorite quotes. He was able to become this, you know, confident and, you know, reliable source of person for himself and obviously now for anyone who enters his life like Mm -hmm. me i'm one of his friends like no matter what it's you you got you and so that helps other people kind of learn from you You and kind of just feel more comfortable and it kind of goes back to to like when i was talking to losty how you know it's you know he he loved his wife from the day he met her and it was always always unconditional nothing of it was ever expectational it was always unconditional and that's rare it doesn't have to be you know a relationship to feel unconditional about something you know you can feel unconditionally about yourself like yourself you know with all that introspective and practicing being alone with yourself and all these things like you feel unconditionally confident you know and that that's just another way and i think that's just awesome and i want to thank you so much brother for being on the show and sharing everything with everybody man thank you dude. thank you for having me um everybody if uh, you're interested i also dj on my stream but i'm gonna I'm a dj battle with lexi on september 3rd so if you guys want to slide through that it's gonna be a lot of fun thanks dude, man. absolutely that'd be great yeah, yeah. absolutely all right uh, everybody thank you again for coming to the show and everybody thank you for all the gifts and all the love and the comments and everything and just being a part of the experience of grow through it this was our second episode um next week on this at this time well an hour ago from this time uh, we'll have episode three so tune in for that if you would like to be a guest please message me and um we'll definitely make that happen i'm gonna go ahead and uh, close out of here show's over just kidding (laughs) uh yeah and emoji j he's got the replays in his youtube and his bio so if you want you can watch the episodes if you may have missed the first half or missed the episode from last night i'm sorry last week (laughs) um go ahead and check it out they are there on youtube um but and i will be back on here um once i close out i'll be back in about a half an hour or so and uh thank you again everybody for all the love and support And um, if you want, come back in a little while. I will come back. So see you guys. And if not, have a great night. Keep growing. Don't ever stop growing.